All right, this is from episode 115 from June 23rd, 1991, days before the beginning of the Zaharian trial. And John announced he was going to go to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania for the start of the trial, which was really all over the media at that point. Fans were abuzz that Hulk Hogan was reportedly going to testify, but at the time of the episode, a judge ruled that Hogan didn't have to testify, which angered Dave Meltzer, who made his feelings on the matter known on this show. And what we have here is the perfect person to interview at a time like this, superstar Billy Graham, uh, an interview with him, and which is going to be followed immediately by Dave Meltzer to discuss the ramifications of what was about to happen. Now, this is this is a long clip, gang, so uh, buckle your seatbelts for this one. But it's it's so newsworthy, but we feel we have to present it to you. And, John, your remembrances of, of these particular moments on your show. Well, uh, you know, certainly Billy Graham and I had been in contact with each other on a, a very regular basis at this time, and he was kind of filling me in what was going on. I was making arrangements uh, to go to Harrisburg to cover the trial in person. Uh, you know, Billy was someone that I was even, you know, going to pick up at the airport. And, and it was, so we're making all those plans. And, of course, always having uh, uh, always having a guy like Billy Graham talk about you know, his uh, experience, what was going on on air, not not, you know, not what was going on off air. And then um, also, uh, you know, the the emotion uh, from uh, uh, Dave Meltzer on the Hogan situation. I mean, you know, he got excused because it would hurt his public persona, uh, which was really not a, um, a valid excuse to get out of that trial. In um, my as, opinion. The, as the kids would say, WTF. Right. I mean, exactly. really? Oh, SM SMH, right? Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Crazy oh, my gosh. Well, yeah, we, we, we met Alex laugh. I'm proud now. Okay. Yay. <laughs> but um, um, the thing about Billy Graham is, if, for those of us who watched him in the 70s when he was WWF champion, there has never been a more charismatic, physically incredible, one-of-a-kind star as him who just influenced so many wrestlers that came down the pipe after him and to see what he had to go through. He regretted it. He admitted everything he had ever done. And it was just for, for me really heartbreaking. And every time he was on your show, because he at that point didn't have a lot of good news to report, John. No, he did not. No, his health was deteriorating. He was in the middle of something. And I don't, I still don't think we know, the true, true inside story on Graham's involvement, you know, it, it, it to me, you know, he he might have been I don't want to speculate really too deeply, but uh, he was in the middle of something that even uh, that maybe he lost control of a little bit with this uh, uh, with his talking about it and with his alleged allegations that were, you know, things that were going on uh, mm. behind the scenes. So it was a. Uh, it was really a controversial uh, time period, and uh, you know, our covering it was really uh, uh, was was making news everywhere. It was making news everywhere. Every time we interviewed somebody, uh, it made the news. It made you know the news with all the uh, insider newsletters and other talk shows that were beginning to emerge. And so, I mean, we were right on the forefront of all of this, and uh, these clips are certainly bringing that back. They certainly are. So uh, we should go to this clip. What we're going to do right now is uh, we alluded uh, right before the commercial break to this interview, and uh, uh, it's, a, it's a heartwarming interview, and it's also a sad one with the superstar Billy Graham. Uh, he is still uh, in rough shape out in California now. He can walk. You know, he's using the aid of crutches uh, to get around with, and, uh, but the sad thing is in September he's going to get his hip replaced again. This is all due to uh, steroid abuse. This will be the second uh, uh, hip replacement that he's had. Uh, Billy Graham is going to be instrumental part of this trial this week. Uh, the Dr. Saharian's defense uh, basically is uh, he's going to try to say that steroids are not harmful to wrestlers uh, or anyone else. And when Billy Graham comes into that courtroom, uh, he's going to dispute that, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Uh, why don't we do this? We'll get right to the interview now, and uh, then we're going to bring on Dave Meltzer, and we'll talk about the trial tomorrow. So here now, Billy Graham. Uh, first of all, John, just let me say this, that uh, 
this is a uh, this is this is a mad this is a story of uh, of life and death and health. It's not even it's not so much a story of, uh, of pro wrestling. It goes way beyond wrestling, football, or any other sport. It's a, it's, a, it's an issue of health, and that's what I did. I I debated and I looked at myself and I I, I, I realized what was happening to me, and uh, and I realized that uh, you know it's now or never. The impact that I could make on my peers and uh, especially high school and college kids around this country by coming clean, uh, coming out of the closet uh, with the, uh, on the subject of anabolic steroids, uh, I thought now is the perfect timing. You know, as you know, um, in, in pro wrestling or any other sport, uh, well, anything in life, really, timing is essential. And, uh, and so uh, I felt that the timing could not be better. Uh, and uh, I started making calls, and the interest uh, was unbelievable. And it was just time to come out and speak out against the evils of uh, anabolic steroids. For the layman out there, what are steroids and, and what different types are there? What do they do to the body? What type of adverse effect do they have on the body uh, if you use it for a long period of time? And are there any benefits to it? Well, the, uh, what an antibiotic steroid is, it's synthetic male hormones. And uh, they were originally made for... Um, uh, the purpose of the steroids uh, are for people who were in a hospital and they've had a, a traumatic uh, operation and they're having trouble uh, bouncing back from a post-operative situation. Uh, they're low in body weight, they're low in strength, and uh, uh, they need some help getting back on their feet. And that was why steroids were uh, were originally made, and that, that was the, the purpose for uh, steroids. Um, uh, the, the, under a doctor's care and a close uh, supervision, uh, supervision, medical supervision, uh, that's what they were made for, and that's what they're are supposed to be used for. Uh, what happened was uh, uh, we got a hold of steroids and found out that they were indeed a wonder drug, and and uh, and just disregarded the side effects and the side effects. Uh, something that uh, uh, these kids have got to look forward to, because uh, now it's a new, uh, it's a new phenomenon in this country, John. It's a new epidemic. Uh, uh, high school kids, or college kids, taking anabolic steroids, and, and half of them aren't even through growing yet. You know, your brain doesn't stop developing until you're 15 years old. So they're they're, they're dealing with poison. Um, uh, uh, they'll, they'll, uh, you, your obvious side effects, your outward side effects would be uh, 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 maybe some male uh, pattern baldness, uh, you, uh, acne, uh, you, you break out in acne. Uh, also, it's a, an old uh, saying is that uh, the Diana Ball bloat, you'll get a bloaty effect. Uh, your 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 face will get puffy, and uh, obviously you'll 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 be a lot larger than you should be, and you obviously gain a lot of strength. Uh, inwardly, uh, side effects you can't see, but are still going on. It's high blood pressure, uh, liver damage. Uh, it uh, creates uh, steroids will create um, an extra amount of uh, a plaque and uh, raise your cholesterol level, start clogging up your arteries, so you might have heart problems. And then with me, John. The, the, this is really one of the newer side effects that they're just discovering is degenerative joint disease. And uh, uh, so uh, really what it amounts to is this is one of the most deceptive drugs uh, in America today because it'll make you look good and great on the outside, but it, on the inside it's destroying you and tearing your body apart. Well, of course, uh, there are many athletes out there and... Uh you have to look at professional wrestling today is, uh, and also, I guess, professional football, college football, high school football. Uh, many of the athletes today are indeed taking steroids. Now, Billy, when did you first begin uh, taking the drug? Was it uh, before your professional wrestling career or when you first started? No, uh, I, I started in the uh, I started in the mid '60s uh, in uh, Arizona, John. I started taking anabolic steroids. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, a friend of mine at Arizona State uh, University at the time, he was a All-American linebacker, uh, went on to play in the pros and had a very successful career. He uh, he kind of uh, introduced me and some of my friends to uh, to steroids, and uh, because uh, we, we saw what it did to him, he put on like 35, 40 pounds of muscle. We couldn't believe our eyes. And um, he introduced it to us uh, in the mid-60s, and um, uh, I started taking steroids then uh, for powerlifting and bodybuilding purposes. And also, uh, I had a, sh a short uh, uh, a pro football career. With, uh, I had a short stint with the Raiders in 67, Houston Oilers in 68, and then went on to play uh, Canadian ball in the, the latter part of 68 and 69 in, in Canada. And uh, also, at that time, there were... 
other pro football players uh, taking steroids, some of them good friends of mine. And it was totally, at the time, John, it was, uh, it was legal to begin with. We could get them from doctors. Doctors would write you a prescription for them. Uh, without any problem at all. So uh, uh, we were just, uh, like I said, uh, the, uh, one of the main things, there was no one for us, there were no role models for us to look at. Nobody had, had been taking it long enough uh, uh, previous to that uh, to have side effects. Uh, there were even, there were publicized, they're probably sure there were side effects, but they, everything was uh, kept very quiet and there was no publicity on it. So we had no fear of the drug. We had no one to look to to say, this, is guy, this guy's got liver damage, this guy's got heart damage, this guy, uh, uh, you know, he, he, uh, he had a stroke. Uh, so there was no examples for us set. So uh, we just kept on taking it. And right from there, John, I went right into pro wrestling in 1970, full-blown steroid user. And because um, I thought, well, man, this thing is uh, so great here. It's got, it has to enhance my wrestling career. And... Um, uh, I, I I was one of the early forerunners in pro wrestling in the early 70s. I started my career in, in Calgary under uh, 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 Stu Hart, who was uh, Brett the Hitman Hart's father. He's a legend in pro wrestling himself. And I uh, started my career there, and uh, uh, well, I just burst on the scene, uh, really kind of a new phenomenon uh, uh, in the early 70s, and uh, it was all due to steroid use. So, <laughs> excuse me, I was the, uh, the really the real, the forerunner uh, uh, in pro wrestling with steroids uh, at that time, John. Uh, yes, we also recall back in the early 70s, uh, you wrestled for a, a period of time out in Los Angeles, and that's where you started getting some uh, national recognition. Uh, you came into the WWF as uh, uh, the wrestler with probably the most perfect physique uh, in the WWF at the time, and uh, turned a lot of heads, and... Uh, uh, obviously became one of the superstars of the sport. Now, when you first uh, broke in and, and leading up into your first tenure uh, with the WWF, uh, we're talking about uh, the 70s period. Uh, were you aware of how many other guys in the business were uh, taking steroids, whether it were a number of guys uh, just starting to take steroids at that time after looking at your physique? Right. Well, I, I, as you mentioned, I was the actual forerunner of it, um, and at that time, there there wasn't that many people taking steroids in pro wrestling. Just uh, a few people, uh, uh, when they saw me, and and believe me, the word travels fast on the street, as you know, uh, word of mouth. And uh, uh, when I came on the scene uh, uh, and, 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 and was so uh, phenomenally looking as opposed to uh, the rest of the wrestling uh, uh, family, um, it, there, was, there was something up, you know, and uh, the word got out, and uh, it, it just started branching out, and all of a sudden it started taking a hold, and uh, it started going pretty fast. But uh, uh, at, at, at that time, I was really the first one on the scene um, uh, taking steroids on that scale. Okay, and of course now uh, in the professional wrestling ranks, uh, what percentage would you think... Uh in the wrestling ranks, how many, how high is the percentage of guys taking steroids right now? Well, uh, I've I've made this statement on uh, the Entertainment Tonight piece that aired the other night on a few other uh, talk shows that I, um, I feel that at least 90 percent, uh, a full a full blown 90 percent of all pro wrestlers are taking steroids, and since then uh, I've spoken to uh, uh, some uh, a few uh, wrestlers who are close friends of mine, and they and they. Uh, they thought that might that might be too conservative. It could, it could even be higher than ninety percent. So uh, uh, that's a, that's an absolute fact of life that at least ninety percent uh, are taking it, even though it is harder to get now than it has been. Uh, 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 people, uh, uh, it just it's, it's it's drying up. It goes in cycles. It'll dry up and it'll be hard to get. And then uh, boom, a new batch will come along and go across the country. But uh, even though it's hard to get, uh, harder to get now than ever, still a full 90 percent, at least 90 percent of uh, pro wrestlers are taking steroids. That is indeed a shocking figure. What?